Good evening. Welcome to the September 20th meeting of the Water and Wastewater Commission. Um, please be advised that FATV is conducting an audio and video recording of the meeting for public broadcast. There is nobody in the audience, so I don't need to warn them to, not to record, or, record. And let's see. Uh, at this time, I'll ask any electronic devices to be put in silent mode. And we do not have anybody here for a public forum. So we'll start with water. Um, minutes. What's that? Oh, minutes. Thank you. Uh, the minutes were sent out. Did everybody have a chance to review them? Yes, sir. Yes. I'll accept a motion to approve. I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. The minutes are accepted. Okay, so now we've got Mark for water, right? Yes. No. Yes, Mark. John. What? You want John first or me first? Okay, John. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> he takes care of it afterwards. I get it. <laughs> I forgot which That's the secrets we got to go. I forgot which one. John. Just, John, I'm sorry. It's go a ahead. natural progression. <laughs> Uh, good evening, everybody. I um, hope you guys had a good summer. It's been a little while since we met. I don't have anything that needs to be voted on, but just some, some updates on projects and various items. So the uh, Oak Hill Tank project, um, the replacement of that tank is complete. Um, the final loaming and seeding was completed in the last week, and the grass is already starting to grow, so the tank's been back in uh, service for about a month or so. Um, so we're Pretty excited about that and have that behind us. So um, no real hiccups along the way. Um, DEP approved everything, did their inspections, and um, we're just working on the final closeout for the project. So came in at or under budget. Um, so that was a plus. Um, looks beautiful too. I should have brought some pictures, but um, I'll wait till the green when it greens up. It'll really look nice in the next couple weeks. So. Um, so yeah, it's the last of our storage tanks. All the others, you know, should have you know decades ahead of us with some minimal maintenance. So um, we're in pretty good shape as far as that's concerned. So and um, we were able to run the Oak Hill system off of pressure with the pump stations, the two pump stations we have. So with no hiccups there, we didn't receive one complaint. Unfortunately, we didn't have any major breaks during that time or fires in that area um, that you know might have been questionable of supplying everything. Um, so we're happy to have that all done. Um, the SCADA project really got under full swing a couple weeks ago. We shut down the Flula plant and basically ripped out. They First they went through and labeled all the wires, traced all the wires. I mean, there's hundreds of wires and, you know, um, things going to various parts of the plant. So they traced all those, um, labeled them all, and then could commence to tear out everything. You know, once and all that was left was all wires laying on the floor. So they've got that reinstalled. They've been um, connecting everything back up um, and we should be able to start testing the plant. Um, the water will be sent to waste um, because they'll just be sending, making sure all the signals are getting through and that the uh, SCADA, the computer controls are actually able to operate the plant, you know, manually and automatically. So that'll start up next week. Um, we did get a one hiccup is that once we shut the plant down or right around the time we shut the plant down, we had a a compressor that runs all the valves in the plant, opens and closes them. We found that it had a crack. It had been running a little bit more when they investigated it. There's a crack in that. So um, we had to bring in a temporary compressor, which is gonna be installed this week. Um, took a little longer than we thought to get something there. It's gonna be wired in because it's a different voltage than the existing one. Um, and we're gonna order, have another one on order. So just with supply issues, um, just trying to get people to get quotes and things. It's taken a couple weeks, but um, I feel like we're on the right track because we want to get the new compressor in. Um, it'll work all right with the, the, the temporary one, but we want to get the new one in um, because in a few, few weeks we'll be starting on the uh, regional plant with that SCADA system. So we want to make sure the full plant's fully up and running. Um, in between the regional plant, which is the, the biggest part of it, um, we're going to be doing all the stations, 10, 12 stations, just all the controls in those facilities, um, upgrading all that and getting off the Verizon copper lines, which Verizon wants to get, uh, get off, but they won't supply any fiber optic out there either. So um, getting us off of those because they're just completely unreliable. So those will all be cellular. Um, so that'll be a plus because that'll be a much more reliable system. So. Um, so that we have a meeting tomorrow morning just to, to go through the sequence and planning for all those stations and be happy to get that, that part of it behind us as well. So 
a lot of progress. The SCADA project is something I've talked about it multiple times, but we're really in the, the meat of it now and, you know, it's scheduled to be, you know, the, almost all of it done by the end of December or maybe some other stuff hanging out there in January. So um, we would have liked to have started earlier this year, but, you know, we have to wait till kind of the high demand, although it's been raining all the time, so we haven't had as high a demand, but we didn't know that would happen, of course, and couldn't plan on it. But we want to make sure that when we did the regional plant, we were in the low demand period. And that's the way uh, lined up for the schedule for this year. So, um, regional plant um, is going to have a new discharge permit for its backwash water. We don't really have an option of getting into sewer system, so we basically have some, you know, detention basins where things settle out, some settling lagoons. Um, but the new EPA NIPTES permit um, is going to be very strict with the aluminum discharge limits. Mm. So it's something that we're going to have to work on figuring out, you know, how to how to meet those either on the on the site. Um, and I've talked about it a couple times before something a project like that could be three million dollars. You know, we've we budgeted in there, but we're also going to be looking at we need, need to do some future upgrades in the plants. We have a couple of the filters that are um, one of them is offline now. It's kind of been losing some of the media. Um, doesn't really we don't use the full. Um, design of the plant anyway, so that's fine, but we want to make sure that um, when we do the future upgrades, we may be able to change our treatment um, to get away from the uh, the, poly the aluminum um, that we use in that treatment process for, process for coagulation. Um, so that's something we're going to evaluate too. Um, we do have some PFAS in the, uh, you know, very low levels, well below what um, mass DEPs limit, you know, two to three parts per trillion mass DEPs limits is 20, but EPA is looking at something like four parts per trillion. So we'd still be below that, but we also want to, if we can, you know, include some type of treatment improvements um, that helps with that too, to remove that, we want to address that at the same time because we feel that that's only going to get more strict and we don't want to be short-sighted and design some improvements that doesn't consider that down the road because we're not sure whether, you know, that level could creep up in the reservoirs for whatever reason. So. Um, Although our watersheds are well protected, there's still a lot of sources that could contribute that PFAS to there. Um, it's still used in a lot of products. Um, it's in septic systems. Septic systems do not treat for them whatsoever. It'll pass through the groundwater, which eventually makes it to some of the um, some of the uh, reservoirs. So um, we don't have a high risk of that, but it, the risk is there that you know it could cause some levels to creep up a little bit and when we're at two or three if we go over four and require treatment we didn't take that into consideration then that would be a, a short-sighted thing so so those uh, future upgrade projects will can take that into consideration we had just looked at upgrading the filters and clarifiers you know but we didn't want to do that with just you know a, a tunnel vision without considering these other things so we're kind of moving on that track there um, I don't see anything that would affect anything with the rates that we've you know put in place for now in the future so and we kind of covered these things. We just may take a different route to get where we need to to meet the M NIPTES permit um, and upgrade the other part of the plant. Um, we do need a new roof on the facility, so I'm working with the, the building, the facilities manager, um, to have that done next year. There's no leaks right now that we've had to repair intermittently. Um, so, um, and of course, we'll keep an eye on any else that pop up at any time um, and have those repaired. But it's beyond where we just can keep patching it. We really need to replace it. And, um, we're anticipating doing that next summer, which is in our capital improvement plan. So, um, any questions on any of that? So, yeah, just nope. real, real busy time. I mean, it's a lot of stuff going on. Yes, Mike? A couple questions. One comment. Hopefully, we don't find that we end up seeing increased levels in PFAS because we use plastic pipes to distribute our water. Yeah, we don't. Um, we don't use any plastic water mains. I'm kind of, I'm not in favor of that, but there are plastic service lines. So yeah. um, we haven't really seen, you know, that hasn't been a, a factor. So that's one of the things that, you know, we've actually been pushed by sometimes to, you know, to allow plastic water mains. Um, but I've, I've been kind of hesitant to that because, you know, with the cast iron and now, you know, with the line ductile iron, they don't really see any contaminants that have been of concern for those, and I'd rather stick with the tried and true. Yeah. You know, to save yeah. a little money, maybe short sighted in the long run, because they've even had some problems in water systems where they've had a biological growth on those pipes, in part a you know strong foul taste to the water, and you know cause some issues. And it's something that's always in the back of my mind where they had to, you know, super chlorinate you know a whole grid of distribution just to get rid of that from those plastic water mains. So yeah. it's something that you know, and I just don't think they're as strong too. You know, I think that you know eventually that. You know, you think the pipe being in the ground doesn't move, but it does. 
you know, the water gets warmer or cooler as it passes through, the ground moves, and that stuff rubs against rocks and things like that, and eventually it can, you know, it's surprising how many leaks that we do have is from a rock that, you know, would frost or action or something like that get pushed up against a main or a pipe or something like that, and just that movement over time, you know, a little water hammer, um, movement of the pipe, you know, it expands, contracts, you know, over 10, 20 years, it wears through the pipe. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so that that's something that, you know, um, Hopefully, we'll never have a problem with the PFAS regarding that part of it. So, thanks. On an, another note, um, my favorite body of water, Overlook Reservoir. Yep. Um, I noticed that it's extremely low. Yep. And despite we've had record rainfall, how come it's? I mean, it's way, way, yep. way down. The dike um, started leaking uh, a couple months ago um, when we lowered the water level until the water stopped coming out at the dike. So. Um, we were concerned about any failure there, but it was coming out pretty good where that parking area was um, down there and then flowing around. So that started earlier this year with some of the heavy rain. So <clears throat> we got it down low enough until that stopped and we're gonna maintain it at that level. So um, okay. you know, it's one of the, it's considered in poor condition by the state. I mean, it's on after what happened in Lemonster. Um, it's one of the ones, if you click on the maps that have been circulating the news, it listed as high hazard and poor condition. The fortunate aspect, there's really no risk to the people because we don't have a large water, there's no watershed to it, you know. It's only the rain that falls from the sky, so, you know, we couldn't, <clears throat> even if we got 50 inches of rain, which isn't going to happen, that's all that's going to come up in that reservoir, which isn't. So 10 inches of rain may add 10 inches of water, and then we're not going to have a big inflow, so. Um, but it's something we're, we're looking at. We did get funding for our Scott Dam, um, to evaluate, that's probably the one that um, is most critical to us as far as getting resolved, some seepage there, um, and overlooks the second one that we'll be looking at, you know, to, to do a study at with the, the money that we've uh, allotted for future dam, for future dam work. So that's, so, but that's the reason it's down. So. so the dike at the top of the, when you come to the end of the street, yep. that corner was? Yep, it was running out there um, a couple months ago, so. Um, and we just, like I said, we lowered, drained the water out. During the that summer? Stuff. It was uh, during one of the rainier periods. I think it started, Nick, you don't remember off the top of your head, do you? Um, was it May or June? Um, I, I think it was. June, maybe? I think it was June. May, May we didn't get quite as much rain, and then it started raining almost every other day yeah. in June. And then July, we got that really large rainstorm. Yeah. We were a little surprised because the reservoir level hadn't changed at all. It isn't like we got a lot of water. No, we had we let out a little bit at a time to keep it to six feet below. So even at that stable level with very little, it all of a sudden it just started leaking. So something happened, you know, within that dike for it to start coming through there. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Just to add to what John said, um, I also applied for two grants through the um, fish, Mass Fish and Wildlife um, to start looking at and analyzing the potential for dam removal or um, at least lowering the spillway elevation at Overlook to uh, to make that dam non-jurisdictional. Um, so I haven't heard anything back yet. Actually, I have heard anything. I have gotten an email back. Today at 1 o'clock, someone from Fish and Wildlife emailed me with some questions. Um, so I've got to respond there. I don't know if that's going to turn into anything, but um, I am hopeful that they'll at least set aside some funding so we can start looking at, at that process. Um, I also applied for Palula Reservoir Dam which is also in poor condition. It's not quite as critical for removal um, or repair just because of its, its conditions a little bit better than Overlook and Scott, and the dam itself is just not as, as critical. It's not as large of an impoundment. Um, downstream, there's, there's less, less, um, less impacts if the dam was to, to breach. So um, I'll keep the commission updated with those grant efforts. Um, and we'll be going in front of city council, I think October 3rd, to have them um, review and accept the, the grant for, for Scott Reservoir. Um, I wasn't able to put together a letter for approval today, so we'll have to take care of that during the, the October meeting. Yeah, we have, I mean, the city has four dams that are in poor condition, and it's not something that's start, you know, they haven't been poor condition. It's something just, they've gotten older, and it was last year, based on the inspections that uh, our consultant did, Weston Sampson, that they, you know, crept into the poor condition one. But, you know, they're not things that are easily fixed. They're multi-million dollar projects to make repairs, so it's something that we, you know, know, know that we got to do. So, um, so we start, you know, we've been looking for grants, and actually there's a bit more money out there with some of the, 
the program. So we're fortunate in that, so we're trying to get all that. But having said that, we do have money in coming years in our, the water division budget for the water division's dams. Um, the Falula Reservoir, which is the one just below um, the plant, we don't use that for water supply. It hasn't been used for water supply in forever. Um, we would look at, you know, maybe getting rid of that because it's not, it doesn't really have a lot of value. There's no fish in it. I mean, we drained it down for the uh, transmission main project right down, emptied it, and there was nothing in there. So it doesn't mean it, it doesn't have any wildlife or flora fauna benefit. There is something there, but at the same time, it's like it doesn't make sense to, to continue to maintain and have that liability because if it ever did fail, I mean, there is some downstream damage that occur. So if we can get rid of that, um, you know, maybe something make it something a small wetland or something like that would have the same amount of value to you know wildlife. Um, I would like to see something like that. So, <clears throat> and get away from having the dam as a dam. You know, get away from it being jurisdictional. So there's like some options there. Um, like I said, Scott's the other one that crept into the the poor, and that's probably the the biggest expense as far as resolving for the water division. That is, um, the flow is not so bad. I mean, there's still some issues, but. Um, Probably that's the one of the, the greatest concern, and we do have money to and analyze the seepage in that. So, um, so that's a plus. Not Any questions? I just quick one, John. Um, how about usage? With the, um, with all the, the yeah, our, our usage is hard. It's hard to decipher because we did increase the rates. So, um, I haven't had a chance to, to delve into the last couple months. So, I, I'll try to get something updated for the next meeting. We'll. Uh, see how the usage compared to the previous years because we can't go just by the numbers now because of that but i'm sure it's impacted us because um as you know it's raining all the time i mean i've never <laughs> I, I my such an extended course. period too you know we have a couple dry days and then it just we get torrential downpours and mm -hmm. you know i mean I, I don't know about anybody else's lawn but mine's growing like crazy i'm mowing it every week versus mm -hmm. Some months, it's usually every two or three weeks but now it's like every week and if i go you know a couple days over it's like i gotta bag the whole thing it's like yeah, yeah it's uh been a bit tough with that so yeah I'll, I'll put something numbers together for the next meeting so that we can uh, kind of see what the actual usage is now we've had a couple months um, under the new rates um, yeah and the last item I have is just staffing and I'm pleased to report that the first time in I don't know how many years decades maybe I don't know maybe not decades but we are fully staffed and we have some great people some with the newer wage rates we were able to attract some um, experienced people with licenses um, and we're, you know, we're ecstatic with that. And it's so important right now because with the skater project and other things we're going on, um, it's just been a, a huge plus to us. We're, we're, we flushed more hydrants this year and got through more of everything that, you know, that type of maintenance than we have in many years, which is real critical. I mean, it's one thing to miss a hydrant, you know, one or two years, but when you start not being able to get them all done in, you know, three or four years, things can happen during the winter months or just, you know, lack of lubrication regular lubrication can be tough. So um, we're really pleased with that. And I, th we, I we've had very few water quality complaints this year, mm -hmm. um, which I am actually surprised a bit because we have lower usage and usually if there's not enough turnover domains, we can get more, but I think that's due to the flushing program and be able to, to get that done um, properly. So, um, so yeah, it's great to have a, a full staff and be able to accomplish, you know, what we need to accomplish without, you know, bringing tears to our eyes in the morning, like, how are we going to get this done <laughs> with these people when we were half staff? So um, it was pretty tough for a while, but uh, it's an unbelievable change. So I'm um, really, really pleased with it. So, And that's all I have for this evening. Thanks, John. Mark, I'll let you do what, uh, wastewater now instead of water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's nice to be back after a long summer. Um, I'm going to start off talking about the, the big project that we have going on right now during this construction season. CSO 10 has started, it's, it began back in June. It's 22% uh, completed as of this time. Um, the big um, thing that happened was uh, the shutdown of Main Street, obviously, you know, the detour. And it's going to go until tentatively November 15th of this year. Now that's gonna depend on weather and other factors that we just don't know of at this point. Um, Polito has two crews out there working. Uh, they have a uh, working on Main Street and River Street, doing the, the main trench excavation. And that's where the, the detours are affecting the most. And uh, their second crew is doing new sewer installations on Chestnut Street. 
they're doing some water work on Bond Street and also National Water Main has some trench excavation work on various streets in that whole area, preparing it for um, CIPP installation. So the project's going well. It's, um, they haven't hit any roadblocks or problems at this point, and it seems to be going very smoothly. And we're hoping that it continues, and at least when we have a long construction season, and hoping it doesn't end sooner than later. Um, the next item I have is the topic of PFAS. You know, John brought it up, and it's affecting wastewater also. Um, back on September 5th, the USGS, the United States Geolo Geological Society, and the Mass DEP contacted the city about starting to do some sewer, sewer line testing in the collection system in regards to PFAS. They're trying to locate causes of where it's coming from. So they pointed out five places that we think would hit most of the industry that's in this um, area because that's where the PFAS is mostly coming from. So they selected the uh, Fishburg West Westminster landfill. They're gonna do samples at the Westminster pump station that comes into the city because they have a, a um, industrial park upstream from that. The West plant's gonna be sampled. They're doing the final paper mill for Greif. Um, then we're gonna do the two pump stations we have, um, Sawyer Passway and Cobbler Drive. They're going to start this this fall and hopefully get it done by next spring and get some numbers and hopefully find out where the PFAS may be coming from. It's all part of the NEPTES permit that we still haven't received yet. So when we do get it, we're gonna start be required to testing within six months of obtaining the permit. So this is all related to that. So it'd be very interesting to see what they find. You know. Uh, there's not much we can do if they do find it other than look at source reduction because we just can't treat it at the Trema plant. It's just not possible at this point. Um, any questions on that? We're talking not stormwater, wastewater. Correct. Right, sewer. The sewer and lines, wastewater. Who has said that it's present? I mean, it's present everywhere, right? Yeah, that's present everywhere. They did the first phase of testing. They did the influent at the treatment plant, the effluent, and they also did the river, the National River at various points. It's so very are they high saying the we have high levels in the sewer? Um, not the sewer yet because they haven't done that, but it was noticeable at the treatment plant. It's very noticeable in the river. Um, they did upstream from us, downstream from us, upstream from Lemonster and downstream from Lemonster, and we seem to be higher where our levels than where Lemonster was. And it's probably all related back to the paper mills back in the day. It's still, you know, it's sitting on the bottom and it's just leaching out. Yeah, they tested all the wastewater, well, not all of them, but a good, to get an idea a couple of years ago yeah. across the state just to see, you know, is that a source of PFAS and, you know, waterways? Um, from the, the wastewater plants and pretty much they found it everywhere. It's, you know, some levels higher than others, but usually, you know, around the industrialized communities like Fitchburg, you know, so. Yeah, one of the problems we're gonna see is if it's in the sludge, it gets deposited at the landfill, we retake the leachate from the landfill back to the treatment plant. So it's in a cycle. Um, we don't know how much is actually getting cycled, but this is part of the study. So, you know, we can remove some of it in the sludge, but when the sludge goes and gets landfilled, it leaches back out. So it's a problem all the communities are gonna have. And it's still in a lot of materials. They haven't removed it. I mean, I, I think the government needs to step up on making sure it's not in your coffee cups or your pizza boxes or the, yeah. the meat diapers, <laughs> I call them at the plant. I mean, that's all there. Anything that's no stick, anything that's Gore-Tex, I mean, that all has PFAS, so I mean, is, it, the only problem is there are alternates, but are they as effective or are they gonna cause problems down the road? So it's a it's a tough situation because it was just, I mean, there's like 4,000 compounds that, that are similar to PFAS that, you know, that are out there. And, you know, there's like six or eight that they're concentrated on now, but there's a, it isn't like those are the only ones out there and who knows what the health effects of others could be. So, and I, I don't know if they've fully, they fully determined what the exact health effects of these are, but they believe they're bad, you know, so. But. And they're still developing ways of testing it because they don't have, even have a, a selected testing procedure that everyone can use. It's that new. 
Um, the next item I have is um, the CSO notification. Um, I mentioned back in, I think it was May, how we were awarded a DEP grant for our CSO notification program. It was a $71,800 grant that the DEP awarded the city. In order to spend the money, we need to recommend to the city council that they accept the money and authorize the mayor the ability to um, use it and, you know, not just accept it but also to use it. So I put together a letter for the mayor that we can forward to him after this if it's the wish of the con Wastewater Commission. Um, let me read it. It's to the Mayor Stephen DiNatale. Dear Honorable Mayor, I am pleased to inform you that the City of Fitchburg Wastewater Division's proposal, the City of Fitchburg CSO notification plan, was selected for $71,800.02 of funding under the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection Sewage Notification Assistance <coughs> Grant Program. The grant program supports publicly owned treatment works in municipalities in meeting the requirements of MassDEP sewage notification regulation 314 CMR 16.00. Um, this is the new law that took effect last year. Um, the DEP wastewater division will use <coughs> the grant funds to continue the city of Fitchburg CSO notification plan. And I respectfully request that the mayor and city council accept the grant in the amount of $71,800.02 from the Mass DEP and allow the expenditure of funds from the grant. So that's my motion okay. or proposal. That, that's your proposal. I think we need to, I think the uh, <laughs> committee needs to make the motion. Would someone like to make a motion? I'll make that motion. Make a motion. That we, what the motion is to recommend acceptance of this $71,000. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, and I understand since Nick, you're on um, remote, we'll do this as a roll call vote. So I'll start with you, Nick. Nick uh, uh, Erickson. Nick. I vote to accept, yes. George Cena. Yes. And Mike McLaughlin. In favor. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. I'll send it off to the, um, the next step tomorrow. Um, the next item I have is an update on the project down at the East Fitchburg Wastewater Treatment Plant where we are updating the lab and the control room and the locker room areas and also two of the sludge holding tanks that we have that are the last remaining items down the treatment plant that haven't been updated since 1975. The project is out to bid right now. We received the subs. The subs closed on September of 12th. The main general contract of bids are due on September 28th, which is next Thursday, I believe. Um, so far, the bids that we have open, which were the subs, are uh, within the guidelines that CDM Smith um, estimated for us. So it looks like it's gonna stay within the budget at this time of what we thought we were gonna pay for this. Um, so the inflation rate that we were all fearing because of what was happening last year doesn't seem to be affecting us that much in this project right here. So um, next month, I should have a update on what the bids were and who got awarded. So I'll give you further information on that. Um, and that, and so that project is still going smoothly without any hurdles. My last item is staffing update. Unlike John, I still have vacancies. <laughs> um, we have a GIS engineer vacancy. We did hire and brought on staff, someone back in February, but she has moved on to another another municipality. So we have that vacancy we're gonna fill. We have a sewer system operator that we're gonna fill, and we still have a senior wastewater operator fill, which is the most difficult one to fill. That has been posted for about five months now, and we have not even received a, a bite. <laughs> so we're gonna try to get creative on who we, how we reach people but it's, we're not the only people in the state that are having problems with senior operators. It's the license requirements. It's the highest license, and there's just not many of them out there right now. So we're hoping to get somebody soon. The boys down the plant, the guys at the plant are filling the vacancies, and they're doing a very, very good attitude, so it's not making a big impact, but it will over time. People, overtime's nice for a while, then it gets old. <laughs> 
And that's all I have. Any questions for Mark? Any other business? If oh. not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.